The flow source is an important part of the design. Every water system needs one. So select it from the toolbar and locate that wherever your water system is connecting, whether that's a water main or an existing connection point in a building. Click where you want to locate it, and then you can enter in the name, the residual and the static pressure, because it's going to look at the worst case pressure um, calculations using the residual and the best case with static. And then the height is important too, because everything thinks in 3D. And just make sure that the height is in relation to the floor. So if that's three meters below the floor, don't put minus three. It would be 47 because that's at 50. To add a storage tank to your design, drop down the plants menu and then you can choose to have a standalone tank. Or if you want to have a pump within the tank, you can choose that too. And that will be a combination of the tank and the pumps. So we'll just look at the tank in this example. So select it, click on the drawing where you'd like it, press escape, and then as you click on the tank, you'll see the properties. So in the properties, you can change things like the height, the width, and the depth. And you can either enter a capacity, or you can let it calculate based on storage of the peak flow rate. And then the static pressure is default to zero, but if you have a couple meters of water, you could maybe get that closer to 20 kPa, completely up to you. Then on the inlets, it's literally what systems you want to connect, at what height you want the connection, and same for the outlets. To add a pump to your design, drop down the plants menu, and then choose the configuration that suits your design. Click where you'd like to place it, press escape, and then you can click on the pump to see the properties. So you can change the configuration if you like to. You can change the height and the width. And this section is where the pump pressure is provided. If it's uncomputed, it's going to look at the system that's connected and provide enough pressure to meet the minimum inlet pressure of all the downstream fixtures and nodes. In addition to that, you can add a spur pressure, which defaults 20 kPa. This is because you might not model every bend or fitting in H2X, and you don't want to get the results perfectly accurate. So if you want to add additional pressure or put it to zero, you can do that here. Other than that, you can set the inlet flow system, uh, the height of the connection. You'll also get a warning if you don't meet the minimum inlet pressure. If you don't want to get this warning, just set this to zero or even minus, and the warning will disappear. An outlet similar to the inlet, choose the flow system and the height. To add a hot water plant to your design, in the drop down menu here, click hot water plant, click to place it on your drawing, click escape, and then if you click on the plant, you can see the properties. So you can change the name, you can rotate it. If you want to flip uh, the connection sides around, you can do that as well. And then there's three sections. So first of all is the appearance. So you can change whether you want it to be a rectangle or a cylinder and specify the size of that shape. On the inlets, it comes default with a cold water system, which feel free to change and edit the height. Also the gas system, which if you don't want to have gas, click no, and you'll notice that a yellow cap disappears. If you do want gas, then fill in these properties. And then if you want to add a preheat, so like if you're, if you're designing a mechanical heating system and that's supplying this plant, click yes here, you'll get two connections and you can enter in uh, the heat loads. Then on the outlets, you once again choose the flow system, the height of the floor that the connection is. And then for the flow and return system, you need to make sure the outlet temperature is above the return temperature. So have a delta T of at least one degrees, set the return velocity. And if you just want a dead leg system, then you can click no and it is just a dead leg system here. To draw pipes, you have a few different options in the toolbar. It's split up between reticulation pipes, which are usually like your horizontal distribution through the floor. Your connection pipes, which are usually your branch connections to fixtures. And then you can draw multiple pipes at once and we'll cover a riser in a different video. 
The reason these are split up is because you can set different parameters in the settings here under flow systems, so different materials, different velocities, and things like that. So let's choose copper. Now I can anywhere I click I can start drawing, but if you want to connect to something, as you hover over it, you can see a little blue um, plus symbol. And then it's just like drawing polylines at this point. Everywhere you click, it will draw. In the bottom left here, it's important to see there is a height to everything you draw. If you're doing a more concept design and don't care about being fully accurate, I wouldn't worry about the height. But if you want to be accurate for all your pressure and heat loss calculations, then you can control the height with the up and down arrows on the keyboard. So as I press up on the keyboard, we'll see that black semicircle appear, and we'll see the height in the bottom left change. And once again, if I press down, we'll see a new semicircle. Uh, you can also see down here that the length is kept track of. So if you're drawing a certain length, um, you can control that there. And you can hold shift if you want to draw a funny angle. Um, you can do that. And then now that will still snap to 90 degree uh, planes from that angle or the traditional 90 degree. One thing to be aware of though, if you have drawn a funky angle um, by accident and you want to straighten that out, just dragging this um, causes problems, especially when this is connected. So what I would do in this case, I wouldn't try and, uh, you can hold shift again, and straighten it out, but you'll never get it perfect. The easiest thing to do, honestly, is right click, drag a box over it, delete, and once again, just draw your pipes, it's much faster. Uh, and yeah, of course, if you want to move these around, uh, really easy to modify. If you want to change the height after it's been drawn, you can do that here as well. So as we change this from nine to eight, those semicircles appear. Uh, and then if you want to override any properties, like maybe this section of pipe for some reason is an existing stainless steel pipe. So override, make it stainless steel. And maybe you know the diameter is two inches. Once you've set that, all the calculations will run with that in mind and it's highlighted yellow. Uh, so for someone reviewing it, even yourself, you can always remember that there's something different about that pipe. Uh, if you wanted to draw a PEX pipe, it works exactly the same way. Just obviously when we click on this now, it's using a PEX with a different velocity compared to uh, copper. And then the last one I'll show here is the multi-pipes. So the way this works is whatever you, whatever is highlighted in the circle, so here it will be two pipes, here it's three pipes, you can now start, um, if all your pipes are following the same route, start clicking that around. And once again, in the bottom left, uh, you can control the height if you want to. And those pipes can be individually moved, deleted, or whatever needs to happen. And if you're trying to connect to something, such as, um, let's say, a booster pump here, it is somewhat easy to hover over the connection point and come back and then it will snap as we saw just then um, so that you can get the 90 degree angle but sometimes it can be fiddly so let's say if we uh another way to do it which we recommend sometimes is to just draw straight past it instead of trying to get it accurate draw it into the connection and then you can just click on it and delete that pipe so same if we had a fixture here um, Draw this pipe up and try and hover over it and snap it again, uh, which you can do. But sometimes it's easier and faster to do something like this. Um, so, whatever works best for you. If you add a riser, let's have that anywhere, it will default to the bottom of the ground floor to three meters of the top floor. Um, and you can control the height of each level here, by the way. Um, but let's say we wanted to offset this on level two. So maybe at, um, at 8.7 meters, so 2.7 meters above level two, maybe we want to offset it. So that means for this riser, we would say we want the top height to be 2.7 meters above level two. Now what that means is below that uh, number, it's, it's going to show, but above, because it's stopping at 8.7 and this floor's at nine, it's not showing. And then uh, if you want to do the next riser, so let's say we want to just offset uh, to here. This riser, we can have the bottom height 
we want to uh, limit that. So we want to have the bottom height as 2.7 um, as well. And then if you're drawing a pipe, it does default to whatever's in the settings, so maybe free. So if you just want to uh, and use that with the arrows on your keyboard. Um, say 2.7. As you can see now, the, the pipe offsets and the riser comes up to this level. Nodes are a great way for you to get your results in a fast and efficient manner. The way they work is instead of adding individual fixtures and connecting them all together, you can choose the node. And let's just say, for example, there is a shower in this area that will snap to the nearest pipes. And then maybe there's a basin over in this corner. As you can see, it's really fast to add these. And then for the calculations, it will look up the fixed units or the loading units to do the pipe sizing calculations. Alternatively, if you have common groups of fixtures like this bathroom, in the node menu, because that doesn't exist, you can create your own by following this process. Um, give it a name, give it a range of pressures that you want to aim for. If you fall outside of it, it will give you uh, warnings. Um, and then, yeah, we can put in the lavatory sinks, um, three WCs and one shower. Scroll down, click create. And as we come back to the project, scroll down, that will now appear. And once again, we can stand by in that area. And we can see we've got the fixed units uh, for what's connected. Fixtures are a great way to get detailed and accurate results. But if you are doing a concept design where you don't need to go very, very detailed, we'd recommend using the nodes, which are covered in a different video. But if you do want to add the fixtures, we've got a range in this drop down menu here. If there's something on the list uh, that you can't see and you'd like to add in the nodes here, you can create this fixture node and that will snap to the nearest pipe. So, for example, if we had a future fit out over here, or it was just a fixture that doesn't exist, give it a name, enter in the fixture units or loading units, and yeah, it will contribute to your design calculations. But for fixtures that we do have, choose it from the drop down menu. You can rotate that with the arrows on your keyboard and then stamp it on top of where the architect has shown it. If you hover over a fixture, um, it will bring up this black line. So to get them all neatly aligned, you can do that. I'll just do two because there's two ways to connect them up. One way is to manually draw the pipe. So you can hover over it click and connect to the nearest pipe as that cap disappears you know you've connected to it another way is to let the software do the connection so you can click on the fixture hold control click on the pipe you want to connect to or alternatively right click keep hold of it and drag a box over the two things you want to connect and then click auto connect and i'll run that pipe in the most efficient route it thinks possible Connecting two fixtures, such as basins or lavatory sinks, where they have a warm water connection, is a little bit more difficult. So we look at two examples here. Because it requires warm water, it doesn't let you connect hot straight to it. As we can see here, as we hover over this, that cap doesn't disappear. If we want to change that in the fixtures properties, allow the systems to connect, for warm water, it'll turn that cap from orange to gray. And now as we try and connect hot water, hover over it once again, you can see that cap disappears. And now we'll connect the cold water up, just like that. Alternatively, if you do want to keep it as warm, we've got TMVs or tempering valves, so they snap to the nearest pipes. Um, if you want to, you can start connecting this up. However, once again, you can do auto connect. The pipes aren't always straight, especially in tight situations, and it can be difficult to drag things. So, if you did want to, if you want to be really accurate, just draw the pipes. If you're happy with that because your calculations are uh, as accurate as they need to be, then yeah, that's a great option. It's really simple to add valves to your water system. In this drop-down menu, there's a range to choose from. 
Um, let's just say we want to put some ball valves on the design. As we come over here, whenever we hover over a flow system, it will snap to that one. They all contribute to pressure drop, so it is important to put them in if you want accurate results. So there's a range of valves here. Um, ones like RPZs have significantly high pressure drops. Plus the only unusual one is the pressure regulating device. So as we stamp this on the drawing, you always want to make sure the arrows point in the direction of the flow. If it's facing this way, it's not going to let water through. Um, so just always flip it if you need to. And choose the outlet pressure, so that could be 350 kPa. Sometimes if there's a really high incoming pressure and you try to step it down too much, you'll get a warning to say that it's being exceeded. So in that case, you just want to put in multiple uh, in series like this. And each time, just maybe you step down to 500 with this one. And then with this one, you step down to 350. So you're not taking too much pressure off at once. And then there's also a balancing valve. So anytime two systems interconnect, you'll want to make sure to, to add a valve and that will balance the whole system. 